Sup guys, Tearless here with another Warlords of Draenor beta video. In this video I'm going to be looking at the last of the druid specs in Guardian Druids. I'm going to be looking at their major changes, their changed and removed abilities, their new and changed glyphs, their new Draenor perks, and then finally their new and changed talents. The biggest change to Guardian Druids comes in the form of their mastery. Their mastery was nature's guardian which was kind of just a you know bonus to your armor. However, with the addition of the bonus armor as a secondary stat, very much like multi-strike and the multi-strike masteries, Blizzard wanted to remove, you know, having a mastery that was the same as a secondary stat. So, Nature's Guardian was removed, and in its place, Mastery Primal Tenacity was put in, and it causes the Druid to gain a physical absorb shield equal to 12% of the attack's damage when they're hit by a physical attack. I'm kind of okay with this. Uh, it's another bubble, kind of like Death Knights, just the source to which they receive the bubble is different. You know, Druids will now gain their bubble from an attack made on them, and Death Knights gain their bubble still through Death Strike. So it's a little bit of a difference, but they wanted to change it up so that you were not doubling up on Bonus Armor, which is the main tank stat in Warlords of Draenor. Another major change for the Guardian Druid is the maximum number of charges that can be accumulated for Savage Roar has been reduced, and Blizzard says this is to make uptime more consistent between short and long periods of tanking. I am not a Guardian Druid raider, so if you are a diehard Guardian Druid, you will have to translate that yourself, uh, but that is their direct quote. Another major change comes in the form of, you know, Blizzard felt that Rage Regeneration was not that great for Guardian Druids in Mists of Pandaria, so they made some changes to their secondary stats. Haste, for instance, will now um, cause the global cooldown to be reduced, so that's a nice addition to Haste. They did lose the, bear f the section where Bear Form increases Haste and Critical Strike from items by 50%, but it will be made up in the abilities. Also, a new ability was added known as Ursa Major, and it is your auto attack multi strikes, mangle multi strikes, and last right periodic multi strikes grants you Ursa Major. Ursa Major increases your maximum health by 2% for 30 seconds. So, you know, if I go here and I start stacking, you know, last raids and mangle on the target and I keep getting the multi-strikes, you can look up here and you can see my maximum health has been increased by 16% and it keeps rising because I'm using lacerate a lot so the lacerate stacks are generating some multi-strikes which causes Ursa Major to add another stack and each individual stack will last 30 seconds so it continues to stack on top of one another basically makes druids you know really health oriented it takes their you know defensive capabilities out of you know armor and more into you know bubbles and health pools that is the change to you know the overall functionality of a guardian druid the last two major changes that come to Guardian Druids are that the travel forms have all been you know, put into one ability. So if I click travel form, I shift into flight form. And it'll change based on the medium. So if I'm in a no flying zone, it'll transform me into cheetah form. And if I'm in a, you know, a pond or a lake in the water, it will transform me into aquatic form. Another major change is that symbiosis is gone. It was too much button bloat for the game because Symbiosis really, uh, realistically added a button to every single you know, spec in the game. So they removed Symbiosis and they kind of compensated you know, in some other abilities in terms of any type of defensive capabilities you would have received through Symbiosis. So that leads us to the changed abilities for a Guardian Druid. First, you should know that Fairy Fire lost its weakened armor debuffs all you know, weakened armor debuffs have been pretty much removed from the game, so I wouldn't worry about that. Skull Bash will no longer increase the mana cost of spells uh, by the player that you interrupted, so that has been changed. Savage Defense, as mentioned before, the number of charges was reduced, so Savage Defense will only have a maximum of two charges as opposed to three. 
Thick Hide has been kind of... It, well, it's been merged with Bear Form. So, it's a removed ability, but it's been merged into Bear Form, so I'll just go ahead and go through the changes. And that Bear Form still reduces magical damage taken by 25%, excuse me, reduces the chance you'll be critical hit by tax by 6%, and reduces the chance for your tax to be parried by 3%. But it will no longer grant that extra bonus armor that would put it up to, like, I think 330%. So now you're... you're Bear form will only increase armor by, it seems, 180%. And it will no longer reduce the cooldown on bark skin. So that's kind of a major change that you need to you know, look out for. Cat form will now naturally track humanoids when you go into cat form. So it's not like something you have to do. Mangle now generates 10 rage as opposed to what it did before, which I believe was 5 rage. And this was just a change to address the issues that, you know, were a problem with the rage generation during Miss of Pandaria. Shred, this won't really apply to, you know, Guardian Druids very much, but Shred can now be used from any direction. So just so you know that if you're in cat form for some reason and you use Shred, you do not have to be the behind the target anymore. You should also know that only Shred and Mango will now apply infected wounds. It will no longer be multiple abilities that apply infected wounds. So if you're trying to chase someone down, you got to make sure that you apply uh, Mangle to the target, or else you know they will be able to run away. You will not be able to use the other abilities that you have in the past to apply the infected wounds debuff. Thrash strikes all, but it will only generate one rage instead of two and there's no weakened debuff so same as fairy fire it lost its weakened armor debuff uh... survival instincts it now has a two minute cooldown so that is a buff you know it used to be three minutes and it has two charges so it's kind of a two-fold buff to make up for the fact that symbiosis is gone and you no longer have the reduced bark skin cooldown so a little bit of a change there. A big PvP change and the last change for Guardian Druids is that Cyclone now shares diminishing returns with Fears. So, you know, if someone uses a Fear, then you use the Cyclone, it would be cut in half. It's just putting it under the same umbrella of diminishing returns. It can also be cancelled by immunity facts such as Divine Shield and Ice Plug, and it can be dispelled by Master Spell. So a huge nerf to Cyclone, um, basically just bringing it down to Earth with all the other specs. There are several removed abilities for the Guardian Druid. The first is Bear Hug, and has been removed from the game. Enrage, which was the generation of Rage, the special ability that helps you generate Rage, that has been removed. Infected Wounds has been, you know, removed. It's just baked into only Shred and Mangle now, so it will not apply to Ravage or Maul. Nature's Guardian was the mastery that was removed. Leader of the Pack is no longer available to Guardian Druids. Same thing with Rip, and Maim, and Swipe, and Rake, and Pounce. All of them have been removed from the game and are now either really only applied to Feral. Pounce and Ravage have been removed from the game, but they were baked into existing abilities such as Rake but you will no longer have access to Rake that will be Feral only. So once again, Rake, Swipe, Maim, Rip, and Lead of the Pack are now Feral only. Hibernate and Innervate have both been removed from the game. Innervate, all mana, you know, regenerating effects have been removed from the game. Mana, Tide, Totem, you name it. They've all been removed. Blizzard's trying to make it, you know, make healers, you know, really conscious of how much you know, mana they have in their pool, and so they're going to have to be really careful on their mana pools. Nature's Grasp has been re removed from the game. Uh, I don't know how important that was to a Guardian Druid uh, in PvP, because that's really the only place you would use it. Tranquility is now Restoration only, so you will not be able to, I don't know, pop out a bear form if you're off tanking something, and uh, pop a Tranquility in a weird, bizarre circumstance that would come up. You can no longer do that. So, you know, that's a lot of removed abilities from the Guardian Druid spec, but know that a lot of them are just, you know, spec specific and making things more unique per spec. 
There is only one really new glyph for Guardian Druids. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. It's actually just a minor glyph. And it is Glyph of the Travel. Glyph of Travel. You gain an additional 60% movement speed while in the land version of Travel Form. This movement speed bonus will not be granted if Travel Form is activated while in combat. This effect is disabled in battlegrounds and arenas and cannot be combined with other speed increases. Also notice that it's exclusive with Glyph of Stack and Glyph of Cheetah, so you can only have one or the other, not both. There are three changed glyphs. The first of these is going to be the glyph of Entangling Roots, which really doesn't apply to a Guardian Druid too much. It now reduces the cast time of your Entangling Roots by 0.5 seconds instead of, I believe it used to be like 0.2 or 0.3. So it's been increased. It's a little bit of buff there. Glyph of Stampeding Roar, another thing that really won't affect Guardian Druids too much. It increases the radius of Stampeding Roar by 30 yards, and you can now cast Stampeding Roar without being in bear or cat form, which, you know, if you're a Guardian Druid that really doesn't apply to you too much, it's more of a buff to, you know, Balance and Restoration Druids. The last is going to be Glyph of Survival Instincts. This has been changed so that it is now reduced to the cooldown of Survival Instincts by 40 seconds instead of a full 60 seconds, but reduces its duration by 50%. That leads us to the Draenor perks of a Guardian Druid. I'm going to go ahead and pull them up. They honestly don't have the greatest ones. They're not very interesting in my opinion. There is Glyph of, uh, well, the perk Enhanced Tooth and Claw. Tooth and Claw can now accumulate one additional charge. There's Enhanced Fairy Fire. While you're in bear form, Fairy Fire no longer has a cooldown and deals 100% increased damage. There's Empowered Berserk, increases the duration of your Berserk by 5 seconds. And then lastly, there's Empowered Bear Form, which Bear Form grants you an additional 10% stamina. So really kind of pushing that, you know, Guardian Druids are, you know, thinking about their health pools and, their, and the new Mastery Bubbles that they have. That leads us to the Talents of a Guardian Druids, uh, the new Talents and Changed Ones. Just going down the line, know that Incapacitating Roar used to be named Disorienting Roar. They basically just changed it so that you would know that Incapacitating Roar shares a diminishing return with all Mesmerize effects or Incapacitating effects. So if a you know Warlock's Succubus uses Seduction, it will share a diminishing return with Incapacitating Roar. So just know about that. Typhoon's range has been cut in half. It's now only 15 yards. I don't know how applicable it will be. Soul of the Forest now generates more rage. It generates 5 more rage and 15% more damage. So it's just a little bit of a rage buff there for Soul of the Forest. Instead of the percentage base uh, buff that it used to be, now it's just Mangle Straight generates 5 more rage. That brings us to the final talents at the bottom here. The first is Guardian of a Loon. It is Savage Defense now lasts 3 seconds and increases your chance to dodge by 100%. Additionally, the recharge time on Savage Defense is now reduced by your base dodge chance percentage. So, that's a uh, you know, pretty cool buff. I've actually t you know tested it out a little bit. I, I kind of like it in PvP. I was messing around with it in Ashran, so... There is Pulverize, which a devastating blow that consumes three stacks of your last rain on the target to deal 1,300 physical damage and reduce damage taken by 15% for 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and grab it here. I'll switch back into bear form. Put it on my bars. Let me go ahead and get some last rain stacks on this target. And you'll see the visual here. It's okay. It's not the best. Um... I don't know how popular this is. I'm not a, you know, I've never been really big into Guardian Druids and Tanking Druids, so I can't really explain how effective that will be, but it, you know, is something to look at. The last talent is Bristling Fur, and you bristle your fur, reducing all damage taken by 40% for 3 seconds, so you have another defensive cooldown here. So go ahead and use it. Switch back into your bear form, and you can see... It's not much of a spell visual. 
It lasts only for three seconds, so it does not last long. But um, that is the last talent for you know Guardian Druids, level 100. I'm kind of disappointed in the the talents and the Draenor perks for Guardian Druid. I kind of feel as though they're rather uninteresting. Uh, Guardian Druid has been somewhat entertaining to play inside a battleground. It's been more entertaining to play than you know at least one or two of the other tanks. It's kind of in the middle. But uh, in terms of PvE, I could not give you a full opinion because I have not played PvE on a Guardian Druid yet. So, otherwise, they, their talent options are okay. I think the big change you're going to notice with Guardian Druids is really their change to their mastery and how they're going to mitigate damage from now on. It's no longer going to be based on that armor just for the... You know, the fact that they want to put more emphasis on bonus armor as a secondary stat. So, that's everything to deal with Guardian Druids. Uh, I hope, uh, well, every, all Druids in general, actually. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you guys in the next video. Tales out.